Hello you lot, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith and today I'm going to do a proper winter warmer comfort food oxtail soup. Hopefully a bit like the way Heinz used to do it. Before we start, a quick shout out to hopefully a new subscriber, Elias Henry Blood, who lives in Syracuse, New York and um, has just been born. That's from your dad, Patrick Blood. So there you go. Your first ever shout out, I imagine. And also to Paul Sack in Perth, Australia, but originally from St. Helens in Lancashire. Uh, but he moved to Australia about 13 years ago and he desperately misses Heinz oxtail soup, um, which used to be his favorite. He can't get it now, so he needs to know how to make it. Now, I'm not promising that my version will be exactly like Heinz. In fact, I know it won't because it won't have all the stuff that they like to put in. We actually got a can of Heinz oxtail soup a few weeks ago just to just to check if, uh, if it tasted the way I remembered and it didn't. I remember it as being incredibly meaty even though there was virtually no meat in it. I mean, I looked at the label, it's 5% meat of which 1% is oxtail. So yeah, it's a bit of a swizz. But, um, I mean, it's still pretty meaty. However, mine will be mega meaty because I've got half a ton of oxtail to put in it. If you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, etc. Make a donation, become a patron. Thank you. And without further ado, let's uh, do it. Okay, ingredients for the soup. I lied about having half a ton of oxtail. I've got half a kilo and that'll be wonderful. I've also got an onion, a couple of sticks of celery, a couple of carrots and I just happen to have half a leek. That's kind of optional. Also uh, a sploosh of tomato paste, puree, uh, a couple of bay leaves, some flat leaf parsley. That's actually been in the freezer so it's a bit weird. <laughs> puree. Uh, and some salt and pepper to taste at the end. And a couple of litres of boiling water and some flour. Okay so I've got some plain all-purpose flour. I'm going to cover the oxtail bits and fry them off. Some people would insist that you should season this flour. I don't. So melt some oil or fat or the lubricant of your choice in a frying pan. Get it fairly hot and throw in you know, lumps of oxtail. Whiz those around, get them nice and brown or over. And then put them in your cooking vessel and add some water and, and bring it to boil. So if I was a smart ass, I'd, um, I'm sorry, if I was a clever clogs, I would uh, explain to you that the, that browning is called the Maillard reaction after the chappy who discovered it, Mr. Mr. Maillard, not Mr. Mallard. Yeah, it just uh, describes the chemical reactions that take place and you apply heat to flesh. <laughs> Girls brown and we love it. Well, not just flesh, works on toast as well. So, uh, right, I'm chopping up my veggies, um, quite small. I've got to do something about this table thing, it's, uh, it's gone wobbly on me. So when you're cooking red meat on a bone, it's going to take a long time to cook, to, you know, to be really, really tender. So you've got three main options. You can do it in a stock pot, crock pot, slow cooker, uh, and it'll take eight to ten hours, you know, sort of overnight. Or you can do it the conventional way, on the stove top in a big pot, and that will take three and a half hours. Or you can do it the cheaty way, in a pressure cooker, and that will take about half an hour. Right, so... This lot needs to go in there. Now we need to add the chopped parsley and the bay leaves. A good grind of black pepper. A couple of tablespoons of tomato puree. 
and the secret ingredient that I forgot to mention again yeast extract one teaspoon thereof or you could use Marmite, Bovril, Vegemite things like that other brands are available so yeah give those all a good stir bring them to the boil put the lid on bring it up to pressure let it cook for half an hour and then we'll sort it out so it's had its 30 minutes cooking and I've just depressurized it under cold water so now we'll get the lid off and we'll whack it back on the stove and make fine adjustments to the flavour. So the flavour is not quite there yet. It's, uh, it's more tomatoey than beefy. So I'm going to add another teaspoon of yeast extract. Then a teaspoon or two of soy sauce. And half a teaspoon of salt. I'll maybe add more salt right at the end after it's finished reducing. So I've got the heat on high and I'm just letting it bubble to reduce the amount of liquid a bit. Now I'm going to fish out the meat and the bones and uh, maybe the bay leaves if I can find them. And then whiz it to a state of almost, but not quite, smoothness with an immersion blender, stick blender. I, I don't want it totally smooth but I don't, at the same time I don't want it with really visible lumps of carrot and celery and stuff. A little flecks are okay. But as I recall, the Heinz version is just a dark brown liquid with maybe minuscule shreds of maybe meat in there. So while I was whizzing it, it felt like there was uh, a little bone um, being ground by the machine. So uh, I'm just going to pop it through a colander and see if we can check that. And there it is, a wee little bone. So we'll exclude him and have a taste of the soup. Proto soup. Oh wow. Mmm, mmm. Oh, that is fantastic. It doesn't taste like oxtail. Uh, mainly because, I guess, I haven't got the meat. Well, I haven't got the meat in. So I'm gonna, I've got to shred this. But also, another thing is uh, the colour. The colour is. Um, Nowhere near right, it's, it's far too pale. It just occurred to me, a while ago I was wanting some gravy to go really brown and uh, couldn't actually figure it out. And somebody mentioned in a comment about gravy browning. Now, this is something that I've not, not thought about, not used, not bought, not nothing, for decades and decades. And I didn't think they still made it, but they do. Um, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna be going out shortly to uh, pick up Mrs. Keith Cooks from work, and I'll go to the shop and I get some gravy browning as well, and that that purely adds colour. It doesn't apparently add flavour, so uh, that'll be perfect. Yes. So I've just got to shred all this meat. Oh, and by the way, um, it's it's called oxtail. The chances of it actually being the tail of an ox are like. You know, that. Pretty slim. Um, it'll be the tail of a bull, or more likely a moo cow, but uh, they're allowed to call it oxtail. Don't know how that works, but there you go. Okay, there's all the meat. A surprisingly large amount. That did actually involve fingers at the end. <laughs> it's quite, quite messy, but anyway. So I'll just pop that in the soup and leave it till later. I'll uh, put it in the fridge when it's cooled down a bit more. I'll come back and add some gravy browning if I can get any. Right, mission sort of accomplished. Um, first of all I went to Tesco's and I got this Compton's Gravy Salt which kind of looks, I mean it's nice and retro packaging. I'm worried that it says gravy salt not gravy browning and you look at the ingredients this is actually 80% salt so I think that's not the thing. The ingredients are salt, corn flour and caramel. So I went to Sainsbury's and uh, I got this uh, Sarsen's Gravy Browning colour, rich and dark. And this is uh, ooh, only 16% salt. <laughs> ingredients, colour, ammonia caramel, glucose syrup, salt. Add six drops of browning to every half pint of thickened seasoned stock. Right, we'll try that then. 
So it says drops, so we'd expect some kind of dropper mechanism, or you know, just a plastic cap with a teeny little hole in it. No! <laughs> and so you pour it out into a spoon, you are not getting drops out of this bottle. So anyway, we'll try it with a half teaspoon. And that's darkened it quite, quite a lot. Um, and it tastes a little bit saltier, but it's still not dark enough, so I'll, I'll give it another half teaspoon and that looks, colour-wise, that looks just fine. So, let's taste it. And now, it's test test time with Mrs. Keith Court, <laughs> all the way from the 60s, yay! <laughs> I like that frog. Oxtail soup. Oxtail soup. Oh yeah. B crunchy bread with butter. Oh, that's a gorgeous colour. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Oh that is. And mm. It's really soft in there. Oxtail used to be my absolute, well, one of my many actual absolute <laughs> favourite soups when I was a child. Heinz have a lot to answer mm. for. Mm. Oh that's nice. Mm -hmm. Is it like oxtail? I reckon. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. So, we've got a can of the original that we grew up with that we used to love. So we had that last week. Didn't like it at all. So, I don't know. It wasn't that bad. Well, um, I, I don't know if the recipe's changed or our taste buds have changed. But I'll tell you what, mm -hmm. I put some sour cream in it. And it was really nice. Oh, sacrilege. No, it's not. It's oh, like, yes. you know, beef goulash with sour cream. Same principle. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, dear. You don't like that. Mm -hmm. All right, well. Excuse me. Mm. Well, it's brown, it's glossy, it tastes good, and it's got a lumps of meat in it. Mm. That wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm I'm thinking maybe a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar. Okay. Might be a bit weird, but or a drop of mustard, something just to give it a little bit of edge. Hmm. Hmm. Ten red chilies. <laughs> Five. Mm. It doesn't need something, just to sharpen it, give mm. a bit of edge. Woo! <laughs> Don't stir it. <laughs> there's, just, there's plenty more unsullied. Slightly, slightly overdone it. I might have. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's got an edge. <laughs> <Whoa. Yeah. laughs> mm. That's nothing like oxtail soup. <laughs> Oxtail soup with vinegar, there you mm. go. Mm. You could oh. dip your chips in it, couldn't you? Oh, <laughs> oh that's lovely. <laughs> right, I'm watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>